JB here, or JB here. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. April 12th, 2024. This time it looks like I clicked the button, so I guess that's a good sign. Going to talk about the markets, talk a little bit about Kava, what I talked about yesterday. Um, talk about Dell, some of the other names. I mean, it's a frustrating day giving back the gains from yesterday. So it's been a back and forth battle. That reversal Wednesday on the Fed, I mean, on the CPI data. Then yesterday we had the reversal on the PPI data, and then today it seems like a, a whole bucket of, of possible catalysts for the market here. So I'll talk about that, and yeah, go from there. So so first, take a look at a, the SPY, and I've put these support resistance spots on, on the SPY for the last couple of weeks, 512.50, 518.50 or so, and the 524.50. Those kind of been the, the range that we've been trading between, and then it looks like today we finally broke through that, and... Uh, you know, I get worried 504 and change is the next spot. And I, you know, I don't like, I, I, I always say I don't try not to put my bear suit on, right? I still think, you know, I said yesterday that it's, the, if we're, even if we're not cutting rates, the economy is doing well. So once the, the Fed starts to cut rates, if inflation starts coming in, in line lower, I think that bodes well. And I think that's some reason why the market has kind of held strong. But now you have these, these overhangs. So we have oil prices soaring today, U.S. dollars soaring. You have these geopolitical situations with now Iran and Israel. And who knows what that all comes you know, It's probably all going to come to a head this weekend. And then we have to worry what the market's going to open up on Monday. Um, I'm surprised yields aren't higher today. I call that the triple-headed monster. But yields are actually lower, but they're starting to rebound. So, you know, I, I don't want to set up that we had similar to what we had in the fall, uh, early uh, late September and then into October where we had to pull back on the triple-headed monster. Yields, oil, and the dollar rising. Hope that's not the case. Uh, find some footing. You know, close back over five twelve fifty on the spy would be a great, a great start. But it just it doesn't look like it right now. The other thing is the VIX, and the VIX has kind of been standing pat. It almost seems like the VIX uh, like preceded the moves. So the VIX on on Wednesday it seemed not to get as high as you would think it would have been. Um, based on what was going on with that CPI data. Then yesterday, you know, came down, you know, got smashed down to 15. And then today, you just see it, it was just going all right from the from the pre-market. And it's up nearly 23% today. So, you know, 20, 20 is the historically median number for, for the VIX. So it doesn't mean we're in crazy territory here. I think the fear and greed index, which people look on CNN, I think that was at a pretty high level yesterday. I mean, I, all these different catalysts, but... Yeah, once I saw that, and once we hit 512, uh, 512.50 on the SPY, then I started looking for these hedges. So I'll talk about those. Uh, you know, Avago, which uh, I've done a couple times to play for some points. You see the, the moves, 1300, then back up to 13. I think it hit 1397 in the after hours yesterday. Um, nice chop here since middle March. So, I, you know, I look and they're expensive. The premiums are expensive on Avago. But if it does, if we do get a pull, especially end of the day, near the end of the day, those will accelerate to the accelerate pretty quickly got to 13 10s i don't know if i'll add any more here but it's sitting here at 1342 if it gets into 13 low 1330s and then into 1320s those 13 10s will start gaining premium quick so that's why i look at avago I'm, I'm not saying avago is not a great company or it's not going to be higher down the road but i think you know i i talk about the greed reset some of these names have rallied so far so so soon i mean avago is a 900 dollar stock in in december doesn't doesn't mean it gets down to 900 bucks, but I think there's an opportunity for people to start looking to, to lock some profits into some of these downside moves and some of the names that have kind of overshot. I think will come back. Uh, CrowdStrike is the other one. I've never I, I can't remember the last time I've traded. It's probably what back when it was in 100 buck buck range. But another name, I mean that's in December it was 200 bucks. Ran all the way up to I think, I think it hit 360 after its earnings in March. Has been chopping around. You see the tight Bollinger bands here. Uh, it's under its the 50-day moving average is 318.90. It's at 310. Oh, well, actually, it's under 310 now. And then I start looking for some some inexpensive premiums, right? Some some of these names that have shot up like CrowdStrike, Avago, ServiceNow, uh, and trying to find strikes that don't have too high a premium, so that if it does sell off another two percent or so, uh, I'll make some nice coin on the put. So I looked at CrowdStrike. It was a 3 310 and changed 311, and the 305s look. Great on a risk war basis. I might look to add some more puts if we, let's say we break 510 on the SPY, but for now I'll just stand pat. Uh, you know, unfortunately I've done this in the past and, uh, you know, I say this quite a lot that I think it's important to be able to, 
you have to it's 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 hard trading options already especially on a weekly basis or they expire in a couple hours you have to ride the ups and downs and it's tough to watch things go bidless but at the same token i i've like for example dell and some of these names that i'm bullish on i still think those are gonna be higher it, at the end of the month and into may so in order to be able to continue to hold those positions i need to offset that with some kind of hedge position so that's why i continue to look for opportunities to play some of these hedges and the sectors and areas that i'm looking to do the hedges on are names that have been you know high high flyers and again not that i don't think they're going to head higher but i think once pressure comes in those those will be the the quicker ones to the downside six seven percent at some point who knows so that's that's those names right there um those are the puts. Take a look at Kava, and it was actually at 67 in the pre in the pre market. It's down here at 64.91. Um, hang on one second here, folks. Uh, yeah, still like that one again. I was I was looking. Uh, excuse me, folks. One second. Sorry, folks. I was looking at the April strikes yesterday, and I'm like, ah, oh, let me get some more time into the maze. And I'm kind of thankful I did because the premiums would have came out on the Aprils quite quite rapidly. Still like that one. Huge growth story. 59. Uh, you know, 59% top line growth. I think this heads higher um, in, in the coming weeks, so I'll continue to hold those. The pot names, and I don't know, there's some vote today. Uh, very volatile. We took it ACB all the way up to 730. 11 o'clock was 660, back up to 730, now back in the 660 range. I really don't have any more commentary to add on ACB or CGC, just that they're not down too much today, and, and ACB was actually green while CGC was down 10% yesterday. So I... I, no rhyme or reason for me, but I still think those head higher, so I'll continue to to hold those for upside. CG, I mean, you look at the ACB chart and looks looks phenomenal. Well, at least, at least it looks like consolidation before the next leg to the upside. So those are those. Um, hang on one second here. Adele broke under the the 120 handle, so I you know I had a higher highs and higher lows on the watch list, so I I think it would have to break down near five. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Yeah. It would have to break under that like one, one fifteen or so level that it was at. Well, actually, it was one oh five from the earnings. But it broke out of that uptrend, so hopefully it finds some footing here, back over one twenty. If not today, then Monday. Again, I, the story hasn't really changed. It is sensitive to some of the other moves with the uh, SMCI and Nvidia. Uh, so not going to change my thought process. It's not going to change my long term thoughts on those names. Uh, not really going to talk about Riley. Uh, I mean, you could see. I mean, who's who has the stock to sell, right? If seventy six percent of the shares are shorted, eh. So, and here comes a spy under five ten, a uh, five eleven. Not sure I'll add any more put hedges. I was watching MDB because MDB is typically a name that I would do for for a p potential uh, hedge player put play, especially on a Thursday or Friday when the premiums are less less expensive. And then it was it was moving higher. At the 10 o'clock, it was 354. And then in a matter of 15 minutes, it was 360. I'm checking the options, and there was a it was like a nonstop barrage of action on the on the 370 strikes. So someone was just hitting the ask, hitting the ask. 25 cents. Then it was 28. Then 30 cents. And then it went all the way up to 360 MDB. And then it has since sold off. There was 6,400 contracts traded on that strike, expiring in a couple hours by the end of the day. So. I've never really seen that before. I don't know if someone had, uh, I don't even know what they would have. Selling covered calls, I, I don't know. Yeah, huge position, they're selling covered calls. A lot of it was at the ass, so it's hard to, to see that. The open interest is only 300. Uh, you know, some people saying they bought 3,000 and sold them at a loss. Ah. But anyway, crazy stuff. If I didn't see that call action, I probably would've got the puts on MDB instead of Vago, but that didn't happen. And then the, on, on the flip side as well, Snowflake is was strong, relative strength compared to the market. Was it? Uh, 160 and change is kind of sold off a little bit. So those two names, kind of not that they run up in tandem, but it's pretty pretty much snow as a proxy for the cloud name. So when you see snow going up, typically MDB is going to be up. But for now, I'll just hold those hedges. Uh, you know, hold the calls that I have. You know, still bullish. Hopefully, they're still bullish on the GLP one names. I'm hoping over the weekend there's some kind of M&A news. One of these weekends, it's going to happen. Uh, these. Uh, uh, acquisitions in the middle of the week in the biotech space. Maybe that kicked, that was the, the kickstart. It broke the seal for m and I'm hoping that's going to happen. Um, and especially, take you start looking in the IBB, it's, it, it, it just can't find traction. The, the, the biotechs, it's it's right near its December, low, December lows now. The IBB is off on nearly 2% again today. Some of these names, Biogen, uh, Gilead, uh, some of these big pharma names, it seems like they're selling off because they haven't got a, 
a piece of the NVO and LLY pie, right, with the with those Empix. So, you know, take a look at Eli Lilly. Still holding up there at 750. It hasn't really done much, even though the biotechs are down. Uh, same with a Novo Nordisk, 125. So to me, that just means that if you're if you're part of the board of directors on some of these pharma names that have a lot of cash and looking to do acquisitions, like you might as well you gotta do something soon before your stock get you know to stop the the fall of your stock because investors are looking at your name your company and saying you need to have expo exposure to GLP one and a lot of these don't. So uh, I think that's it. Um, nothing else really to rant about. Cardlytics sitting here at fourteen bucks. Up nearly 8% yesterday. I'm waiting for it to get over 15. They'll report earnings at the start of May. I still think that heads over 20 bucks in, in the coming months, but my, my calls expire next Friday. So I'll look to have a position uh, into May on Carlytics at some point. And I think that's it, folks. Uh, nothing else to say right for now. If things change, I'll be back on the audio later. Otherwise, have a great re weekend. Rock and roll.